Hi, I'm Rachel Strabley. I am a consulting hypnotist at Hypnosis with Rachel, and I'm here with Advi Coach, Business Coach, Sharon Lewis. And we're doing a video series on breaking business barriers um, by creating strategies and changing your mindset to get over some of the common hurdles that we find with um, clients who are business owners. And today we are specifically talking about trust and delegation. So when we think about uh, <clears throat> you think about your clients, Rachel, and why they why they don't want to delegate or avoid delegating things, what, what what's the most common reason? Uh, one of the, one of them is they don't think that people can do it as well as they can. So there's a bit of trust there that also brings in fear. Um, I haven't come across this with my own clients, but sometimes it's a power struggle. This is my yep. business. I need to stay in control. It's me, me, me. Um, or uh, avoidance. You know, there are other tasks that they could be doing and mm -hmm. rather focus on these other tasks that somebody else can be doing rather than getting to the bigger task um, that they should be doing or could yeah. be doing. I think the control issues, because I know a lot of people say that, right? You have control issues. I think some of that is still based in trust, right? So if I do not trust everyone around me to do what I want them to do or what I expect them to do or what they need to do, then it does show up as, uh, you know, control problems. Um, I think the other reason that I, I was thinking about... Um, I, a lot of times I'll talk to people who don't delegate because if I have to explain it to somebody else, it takes me more time, right? It's faster just to do my do it myself. And so for for those instances, there you have to kind of look at the other reasons why you want to delegate, right? So a lot of times you're you're doing these things to save time in the future, even though it takes you now uh, more time now. Um, but yeah, that's a a common excuse or rationale for, for not delegating, right? It's faster for me to just do it. Mm -hmm. um, because if you spend the time to train somebody else to do it, then you maybe you never have to do it again. But so my, so you're, you're talking a little bit about your mindset to get around the, the fear um, and avoidance issues, right? Yeah, if that's what your issue is, if your issue is fear, fear of other people not being able to do the job as well, or the, you know, not trusting people around you, mm -hmm. then that's something you need to address within you, because there are people that you can trust, there are people that can actually do it better than you can, so it's important to ask yourself, why are you refusing to delegate okay and i i think sometimes the some of the instances i've come across where it really is based on trust it's because they got burned before so it's not necessarily that they distrust a specific person that they need to delegate to or are working with but they had a bad experience before and therefore um they're assuming that it's going to rep repeat itself with whoever they need to work with this time it could be. It could also be, you know, a fear of spending money on somebody else doing a job that you can yeah. do. Um, but we know if you spend the money on someone else, then you could be making more money yes. on the things that you, you know, need to do. So some of the reasons that you might delegate um, is, you know, using your resources wisely. We were talking about, um, you know, the value of your time. That's one of my favorite, most concrete examples of uh, for people who are unwilling to delegate or hesitating to develop, delegate is to ask them how much their time is worth and how much um, they would spend paying somebody to do whatever their activity is, right? So if your your time is $100 an hour and you could pay somebody $15 an hour, in that hour, you made 85 bucks. It's you know, it's not real money, but it's a good way to look at it. I knew had worked with somebody who had a team of 14 people and he was, you know, doing all the, the marketing and the business development and things like that. But he was also like refilling the toilet paper and 
buying paper towels and things like that. And I'm like, you know, it's not really in your best interest to be doing that, that mm. aspect of it. Um, but delegating really, um, a lot of it is about, besides optimizing and freeing up your time, but also um, using your people wisely, right? So knowing what their strengths are, developing them, um, thinking about it as a way to decrease risk um, for your company as because cross training, which is really delegating, right? And getting everybody to know some of the same tasks. Um, if something happens to you and you're in charge of everything and you're the only one that can do it, what happens to your company if you're out sick or you want to go on vacation, right? So this could be a way to let you uh, free up time so that you can take time away from the office. So, and I mentioned a little bit um, strengths and weaknesses, but you want to talk about what your thoughts were on this? Yes, knowing what you are good at and what is beneficial to your company and also what you're not so good at, can you pass those things over to someone else? Um, also getting to know your team, if you haven't, you know, if you have a small team, maybe it's one or three, or if you haven't hired anybody yet, getting to know what their strengths are and making sure that they complement your strengths and you don't both have the same weaknesses. Right. right. So, and those are all good, good approaches as a start to figuring out what to delegate. Exactly. Yeah. Um, so in a lot of times if you're looking at what you can delegate or you should delegate, and I, I tend to use both of those, um, you could do a time study and see where your time's going and look for specific activities. Um, but a, a lot of it is, you know, things that you should, should not be doing anymore, like ordering paper towels and installing them <laughs> in the toilet paper in the bathroom, things like that. Um, Things that aren't your strengths, uh, that it, to your point is hiring people that um, complement you as much as possible. Um, things that you hate to do, uh, this is an awesome way to get rid of some things. And I think part of the delegation, it, it doesn't necessarily need to be an employee, right? So, right. you know, a lot of people who are solo entrepreneurs are like, oh, I can't delegate anything because I don't have a team but you can outsource things, right? So, you know, bookkeeping is a great example of you can find somebody to do it for you. Social media is you can find somebody to do it for you, right? There's um, particularly now where everything's virtual and there's virtual assistance, there's all kinds of options to delegate activities to something else. Um, but really it's looking for those things that can go to someone else or should go to someone else and really taking the opportunity to move, move things in that direction. And this is completely not what we were gonna say, but you can hire your family members <laughs> to do certain things for you as well and create a tax write-off, I think, at the same time. Yeah, so yeah. Just, you know, you can- there, There's a, an interesting tax thing and I am not an accountant and you should always check with your accountant first. <laughs> yeah. uh, on, on You can actually pay your kid directly into their 529 and it's a tax write-off and, you know, it goes directly to their, their college thing. But there's, yeah, there's some tricks and tips for that as well. So, like, so Rachel gets into the, the mindset I get into the how do you delegate because what do you what you want to do is not pitch things over the fence and then hope for the best. Uh, so if you had to break delegation into four steps, um, the first one is really just giving them written clear written instructions or demonstrations on how to do it. I think a lot of um, success of delegation is standard operating procedures. Just having the references and tools in place for the employee to refer back to. And a lot of times people, this is a similar thing, right? It takes a lot of time and now I'm gonna have to spend a whole bunch of time writing stuff up. 
um, if you have to train somebody anyway, a great time to create a standard operating procedure employee manual is while you're training somebody. Um, even better, get them to write it up while you're training them. Um, and it doesn't have to be perfect and beautiful. It needs to be, you know, replicable, right? So that they can go back to it and follow it. Um, but after you've given them that and you've gone through it with them a couple times, the second phase is um, giving them more responsibility, right? So give have them do the research for the project or the task and give you some solutions, potential solutions that you then talk through. And then the next sta stage is um, giving them this, actual- Can I? Yes, you may. Uh, um, this could also be uh, videoed and then transcribed. Yep. Possibly. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Um, video or also I've had some clients who have done the, um, you can video your your computer. I'm running out of the words, but <laughs> <laughs> you can, like if you're doing something on, on the computer, you can video actually what your activities are on the computer. So the mouse, you know, click here, click here. And then you have that. Um, it, it, we've we've done that before so that you have uh, it's not actually a video of you, um, which actually makes people more comfortable, but the video of the steps on the computer. Um, we've also recording phone calls for training purposes too, mm, yeah. right? So if you're trying to teach somebody either technical knowledge or you know just you know how to answer questions, what questions to expect, um, recording some of the sample phone calls is, is a good idea too. And I think to your point, more people are using video now um, than the, the uh, written stuff. I, I'm old, so I still feel like the written stuff is more, more accessible because I can just find it quickly. Um, I think maybe if there's an indexing way to, to do video trainings, that might, that might work. Um, but then the, the third step is letting so go of some of the decision making. But, you know, and a lot of this is just communication, right? So it's setting expectations with them. I'd like you to go forward and make the decision, but keep me in the loop, you know, come back. It's not, you know, checking in constantly. And then the last part is just let them do it and let it go. Um, that is probably the hardest part for most people is the part where you say, you know, I'm, I'm done and it, it's all yours. Um, but really being honest with yourself too about, you know, are you able to let it go? Um, are you saying you're delegating things, but not really, and you don't ever actually let them just go off and do their own thing. And then you get back to asking yourself, why can't I let it go? Is it here? Is it <laughs> yeah. avoidance or I forget the first one I said, but um fear. Do you fear? <laughs> oh. Fear, avoidance, and then there was one control. Control, power control, yeah. power, power plays. Exactly. So I guess going through all of this, you'll need to keep asking yourself what's stopping me from giving up this hold um, in each of those phases. Yep. So, um, and, you know, instead of, I talk about coaching your team, mm -hmm. instead of being, here's, here's how you do it, you know, and follow some steps. Obviously that communication, you need to communicate what you want them to achieve, um, but you're doing it as a coach mentor type person and at the you know sharing your vision with them making sure that they understand your vision and have the same vision for themselves and your company um, so that the end goal is beneficial to you both uh, so you know what you, you see right here empower enhance enable and engage that's all about giving your team member the tools they need, the communication that they need, also letting them do what needs to be done, but also knowing that they can come back to you. And then, you know, if you move on to the next slide, it's about having patience. You've, you've been doing this for how many years without 
I moved on to whatever yeah. slide I felt like. I don't know what I did. So. <laughs> I'm getting there. Okay. Hey, I'm patient. <laughs> Good. Sorry. Um, yeah. So having patience with your team member, your team, um, and realizing that they're going to make mistakes. You made mistakes in the beginning. You need to give them some time. And by doing this, you're creating more time for yourself, freeing up your calendar. So you can then go work on the things that need to be worked on. But also, you know, we create these businesses so we can have more time with our family. So we can take vacation time without being on somebody else's schedule. So we're creating these businesses to have a more fulfilling life. And part of that means handing things over to other yeah. people. So you can do, you know, what you envisioned doing in from the get-go. Yeah. And I think we, we we talked about focus. We talked about that a little bit about having the vision for where what the outcome would be, like just sitting there and thinking about it or writing it out, however you might need to do it. Um, but it might be you might need to do the same thing for your rationale on why I need to delegate where you sit there and you think about what the new reality looks like, right, where you're, you know, taking a vacation and no one's texting you constantly because you successfully delegated and they're able to do things, you know, life goes on while you're, or the business goes on while you're not, not right there. Exactly. Start every day with your vision ahead of you, which we talked about in one of the other um, videos. Mm -hmm. uh, and that should make it easier. Yeah. So lots of reasons why to delegate, not too many why not to delegate. I think it's just talking yourself out of them. And sometimes it's finding the right people too, right? Yes. Um, so uh, Rachel and I were uh, doing a video series. So there's a couple other videos on this. Um, all of our contact information is on this slide. And we both have some uh, free content that are on our websites that go along with the, this video. And you can access those with the, the QR codes at the bottom. So Rachel, it was nice to talk to you about um, trust and delegation, and yep. we'll talk to you again I'm soon. Ready to hand over some things. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> All right, we'll have to work on that. Perfect. Yes.